Hey, what's up you guys in this video or in this tutorial we're gonna um, try to do a quick start when it comes to substance painter and um, as you can see here this is a desk lamp it, it is a fairly um, not complicated but not simple in the same time but the process of texture and we're gonna approach here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to simplify the process of texture as much as we can here because this is a quick start to those who don't really know what Substance Painter is. So as you can see here, uh, I've previously done uh, created a video about uh, kind of an overview of Substance Painter. Um, we talked about the interface and everything that you can see on the screen. Now we're going to try to do a quick start. So this is actually a, um, as you can see here, this is um, this is a, uh, a desk lamp and um, these are kind of some folders and some materials inside and some masks. So we're going to talk about the basics of creating these things in order to generate the results that you can see here using the tools we have inside Substance Painter. So we're going to actually remove everything because I want to explain things from scratch. So I think this is going to be beneficial to, for understanding the basics and how the software works from the ground up, or at least the process I use in order to get my stuff done. So first thing I want to do, or I usually do before starting anything, is actually creating folders for the materials I I, I know I have, um, or I'm going to create on top of my model. So here we have kind of a black, we have black, um, black metal, we have white shiny metal for these screws and bolts and small pieces, and we have white paint inside the um, inside here, inside the head of the uh, the lamp, and also the bulb is kind of white plastic or white glass. But we're gonna do the same, create, use the same material because it doesn't make any difference whatsoever at this stage. So we're gonna create a the first folder. We're gonna call it, let's just say black metal, for simplicity. Of course, we're gonna create another folder. We're gonna call it shiny metal and we're gonna create another folder we're gonna call it um, white white plastic because basically from the inside I think um, there are gonna be plastic pieces this plastic this is plastic and this is gonna be different actually and I'm gonna use uh, we're going to use the same material, but um, uh, it's going to have to have a different folder because we're going to use other properties. So we're going to call this bulb. All right, so. Okay, for now, we're going to start actually, um, we're going to start uh, applying some smart material uh, materials. Actually, we don't want to complicate things with using smart with using smart materials. So we're going to go over here to materials and we're going to start with the black metal. So uh, for this purpose, we're going to scroll down a little bit and uh, we're going to choose this steel painted material. This is very simple. We're going to select it and drop it inside. And as you can see here, this is how this material looks like when applied to our model. The thing is that Substance Painter, when we apply something on it, it doesn't care what you applied before, it's going to cover everything. So, also there is a dynamic in Substance Painter uh, layers, the, the one on top is going to cover everything below it. So, uh, since we have the first layer here, or the first material, it is the dominating one, it is the only one in the scene. So uh, right now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a black mask because obviously this material is not going to be applied to everything. It's going to be applied only to the black metal that we're going to apply it to. So uh, probably I was super fast here. So right click, add black mask. And as you can see here, when we add a black mask, everything gets removed because the, the uh, because the mask is kind of blocking everything except except the things that we're going to assign it to it so um in order to do this we're going to use a very important tool which is called polygon fill so we're going to go over here to what we call polygon fill click on it we're going to go over here we're going to have a few options we have the fill mode 
which is uh, going to be using triangles or uh, polygons or mesh. This option here is related to the UV um, layout and stuff. We are probably not going to talk about it that much. But for the most part, we're going to start using the um, the element mode. And as you can see here, this the we want to push it all the way to, to the right. And right now, we're going to start selecting our uh, pieces that we want to assign the black metal to. So as we select it, we can see that we are selecting the areas that we want to be uh, affected. So we're going to keep doing this. And these are going to be the pieces that we want to be part of this. Also, these springs and everything here actually is going to be part of it. We can actually select everything and we will be just fine. Also, here is going to be the same thing. We're going to do it, but um, sometimes you're going to have to be careful because uh, you don't want to make mistakes. Uh, it's okay to make mistakes, but uh, you don't want to make mistakes that you can't see later. And this happened to me a lot and still happens to me, but uh, I go back and fix them. But um, the thing is, you need to be careful and as much as you can while you're doing this. So right now we're gonna do uh, select some of these pieces as well. So this big piece, but the thing is, um, we're going to actually have the inside of this, the head of the uh, desk lamp here, kind of white, painted with white. So what we're gonna do is um, probably gonna leave that later. For now, we're gonna go with the shiny metal. So as you can see here, we're gonna go probably. Uh, here to materials, probably we're going to use uh, aluminum or we're going to use, let's just say, iron shiny. These are very similar, it doesn't matter really which one you use. So, for example, if we use this one, we're going to do the same process right click, add a black mask, and here you go. Um, the, um, the material is really hidden using the black mask. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the polygon fill it is already selected and we're going to go over here to our pieces, select the pieces that are going to be affected by the black mask. Probably you can't see clearly what's going on here because of the, because of the wireframe, which is okay because this is temporary when you when you activate the polygon fill, polygon fill, you can see everything clearly. All right, this is going to be super quick. And actually, Substance Painter made the process of texturing super easy. It's very traditional. I literally can't go back to use Photoshop and the old techniques because Substance Painter and uh, the software that works similarly actually revolutionized the process of texturing for 3D artists because First of all, it's PBR, which is physically, uh, basically, um, physically rendered, and uh, uh, which means that you can see, you're able to see the results in, uh, as you apply your textures, and also it's very quick, and it is a procedural and everything else that makes it easier and faster and better. Okay, so this is for our shiny materials, or for our uh, shiny metal as you can see here and uh, for now we're gonna go to the white we should call it the white the white uh, the white metal plastic whatever keep it as it is because it has metal and um, and plastic at the same time so we're gonna have to choose one in the end of the day so probably for the purposes of making things simpler we're going to go with, uh, we are going to use uh, a plastic material like this one, plastic glossy pure. Apply it over here and as you will see, it's going to cover everything. So now we're going to add a black mask and we're going to go to the polygon fill, select our mesh uh, fill or element fill, whatever. I actually uh, use some kind of uh, some of the terms and some of the um, 
some of the names that I use in the um, 3D packages like 3ds Max or my Hour Blender. And right now we're going to assign our uh, material to this piece first of all. And I'm leaving it blue right now because I want to see, I want to see what's going on. But uh, in order to select the inside only, we're gonna of course use the polygon option here. But the thing is selecting all these like this is not gonna work, it's super slow. So we're gonna go to, um, we're gonna hit F3 from the keyboard in order to go to the UV view. So this is what um, what you can see when you look at it from the um, UV viewport and F1 in order to see them simultaneously in the same time. So, all right, that's perfect. Now we can actually start selecting our polygons very freely. Okay, nice. It's way faster. We're going to select the polygons that are going to be painted with this type of material, like this. Make sure you don't accidentally select anything else, which is going to be terrible. All right, so for now we're going to go to the uh, plastic material or whatever. We're going to go to color or base color and change it to white or whatever color we want it to be. Also, it seems like uh, we have to select this one here because it is part of the deal. As you can see here, it is, it's not very clear, but we're gonna select everything related. It seems also that there is probably, I can't really see what's going on here. All right, that's it, this one here. We got you. And the other side supposed to, I don't know, maybe uh, it shouldn't be affected because it seems like we got everything covered here. Okay, nice. So when we go to the paint option here, we can see that the inner side now is white. Also, this plastic material or the bulb holder is also white and it's a plastic. So in order to gain some time. And for the sake of simplicity, we're going to give them the same material we, which we chose to be plastic. For now, we're going to go to the bulb, which is supposed to be glass, but for demonstration purposes, we're going to use whatever material we have, like fill layer, plastic, metal, it doesn't matter. Because it's going to serve a purpose that is going to dwarf everything, which is kind of the, uh, it's going to have a, uh, an emissive material which is gonna emit light and radiation which is gonna which basically means that you're not gonna see the material of this bulb in the first place when it is lit all right so now we're gonna use a mask polygon fill we're gonna go to elements or mesh fill select it and as you can see here in the 2d view or in the uv uh, uh, elements or in, in UV templates you can see that this is where it is. So now F2 to go back to the 3D view only and we're gonna change the color to something like um, white. It's supposed to be white. What else? Can we paint a uh, bulb? Probably yellow or something like that which is um, which is something you don't see a lot. So this is it for the um, the, the 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 simplest ways of creating materials and creating folders organizing your materials organizing everything that you're going to use and also using masks using the polygon fill using the um, the the, uh, the viewport options like the perspective and the 2d view and we talked about how to select polygons and how to paint using polygons using elements using mesh fill and um, lastly I want to try something, probably uh, we want to, we don't want to complicate things, but um, screw it, let's do it. So, I'm going to go over here, so uh, if you are looking for simplicity, consider your lesson done, but um, hmm, 
for those who want to spice it up we're gonna add emissive channel i'm gonna go over here back to plastic glossy pure go back over here gonna find the emissive channel activate it go back to emissive and add some brightness all right so this looks more like a bulb and if you want to spice it up even more we're going to go to win windows display settings are not shadows we're going to go to let's just say activate lens effects glare damn it it works and yep here here we go son this is some nice effect of uh, of a desk lamp shining some light also we can change some some of these parameters and some of the these effects here some of the uh, kind of rainbow colors here which makes it so silly it's unbelievable anyways thank you very much and i will see you in the next one